Hey, it's Jordan with Status Quo here in Lakewood, Ohio, and we're here specifically because uh, if the election's close between Nina Turner and Chantel Brown, uh, Lakewood might make the difference. So uh, in August, it was a special election uh, between Nina Turner and Chantel Brown, but now um, it's basically large parts are new to this district, including Lakewood, yep. and uh, you've been a councilman for uh, since 2017, but Lakewood went for Bernie in 2016 and 2020, mm -hmm. and you were a large part of that. First, tell us how you got involved in Bernie's campaign, and then uh, what you see as Lakewood's possible role on Tuesday, because uh, it's brand new, and I assume if it went for Bernie twice, it might have a, a leaning towards somebody like Nina Turner. Sure. I mean, I picked Lakewood because it's a very progressive community. So it's a place that really matched my values, very welcoming, um, obviously very democratic, especially for Ohio, even for Cuyahoga County, which is a pretty democratic county. But I got involved uh, with Bernie because I worked for the food bank. I worked in social services for a while, realized if we we're going to make some change, it had to be at a higher level. And that change had to be system wide. Really had to start building from the ground up and change our economic model if we're really going to help people, right? If we're really going to uh, make a difference here. So I got involved in politics, volunteered for Bernie, ended up working for him, came back home after that campaign and ran my own campaign, uh, which we won in, in 2017, as you mentioned. And can you kind of talk about Lakewood? Because uh, Chantel Brown really won uh, because of Beachwood, which is a wealthier suburb, uh, a lot of Jewish people there. Um, Nina Turner won uh, Cleveland last time. Um, she won majority black wards. Uh, what do you think Lakewood now being in this election means? Because um, five to eight thousand Republicans voted in August, and Chantel Brown for Brown, and Chantel Brown only won by four thousand votes. So, I mean, it could come down to even like five hundred to a thousand votes. Well, that's, that's a great point. There is a gubernatorial primary going on, a Senate, very heated Senate primary uh, to replace an outgoing you know, congressman or uh, Senator Portman who's leaving. So uh, Republicans are going to be voting in their respective primaries this time around. And Lake was a, a strong Democratic, it's a stronghold here in the county. We really, there's 34,000 4,000 registered voters in our, our city, and a lot of them vote. We're much more of a higher voter turnout. Uh, place than a lot of places in Cleveland and other parts of the county. So um, if Lakewood turns out like it did for Bernie, for Nina, it could be a game changer. Right. And can you kind of talk about uh, Lakewood being this progressive community right next to broader Cleveland, which yeah. tends to be more, dare I say, like vote for the establishment, normie Democrat. Yeah. What makes Lakewood different than more kind of vote blue no matter who, you know, establishment Democrat uh, Cleveland? I think it's pretty nuanced. I mean, and it's really no. F this this is this is complicated. I mean, we are, for what it's worth, we're a majority white community, um, a very liberal, educated people who do their homework and and go and vote. Um, Cleveland is just a lower turnout, low to voter turnout area, who really stays pretty lockstep with whatever the party is sort of dictating, mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know. It, it's great because if you can get a machine running in Cuyahoga County that can turn out Democrats broadly in Cleveland, Lakewood, everywhere else, generals tend to be, uh, you know, Cuyahoga County is a big reason that Biden took Ohio both in 2008 and 2012. It's a big deal. Um, but when it comes to these primaries, we're really choosing the values of our party. Uh, the places like Lakewood or even uh, Cleveland Heights and places you were earlier today um, end up being those bastions of hope, I think. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of talk about... Um Chantel Brown, I mean, yeah, she's an incumbent, but really for five minutes. So I don't think she really has that kind of incumbent um, advantage uh, yeah. as much as uh, like a Marsha Fudge, who was a longtime congresswoman sure. here. But to me, I see crypto billionaires dumping money last minute. I see oil heiresses dumping money last minute. I just reported Reed Hoffman, who's the uh, co-chair of co-founder of LinkedIn and PayPal. He just dumped 150000 through a pack. Uh, when you see all of his money dumped last minute, to me, based on covering other elections, it's usually not a sign that the Chantel Brown's campaign has like strong polling or feels that they're safely ahead. Oh, they're absolutely worried. They, they see the district shift too. Like different, this district is 30% different than the district last time. She, and Chantel only Brown only won with 50.3% of the vote last time around. And she's only been a sitting congresswoman for a few months. And as I've been telling everyone in Lakewood, we don't have an incumbent running here at Lakewood, right? We weren't part of that special election. We've not voted 
in since the 90s for a brand new representative really we've not had a non-incumbent running since you know for 20 almost 30 years um back when Dennis Kucinich got elected. He was a representative for many years. So I think the opportunity to have to be have a progressive representative again, someone who really uh, cares about the values of our community and is local um, in a district that is kind of compact, I think this is a huge opportunity for mm -hmm. our community. I'm trying to convince people of that, right? Mm -hmm. And have you seen energy in Lakewood for, for Nina Oh, absolutely. I, if I had to put money on it, I'd say Nina Lynn wins Lakewood. It really depends on how much, by how much. That's mm -hmm. gonna be the real determining factor. She's gotta win Lakewood by a lot to offset some of the more um, conservative democratic areas on the east side. Mm -hmm. and can you kind of talk about the broader progressive movement because I'm sure you've noticed online there's a lot of uh, folks uh, you know rightly cynical angry uh, yeah. hopeless a lot of them are just like to hell with it I don't care if it's Jesus if they're running as a Democrat I'm not voting for them sure um, and Nina's even gotten that to a certain degree of people who feel uh, yeah even if she gets elected it's not gonna change much we have a two-party duopoly yeah. you're obviously a Democrat yeah. um, what do you say to that because people's frustration I understand but at the same time would having Brown over someone like Nina Turner get us Medicare for all any quicker I mean it's a tough thing so another point to make here, this is going to be a 90-10, you know, 80-20 at the worst sort of Democratic year. It's a, it's a packed district. It's actually, I think, an unconstitutional district, the way that the Republicans have packed and cracked us through redistricting and all that. So this is really the election here, the primary. There's not going to be a general. We don't have to worry about a Republican challenger. This is our opportunity to choose someone who reflects our values, our progressive values. Someone's going to go there and fight. And I think you've seen Nina. We've all watched Nina. Can you imagine? I mean, this is somebody who really gets it and can communicate effectively and I think it would, she would just be a breath of fresh air to Congress and I think she instantly becomes a, a even larger national figure. She's already a national figure within the movement. I think it's cru crucial, if not critical, that we, we do our best here. That's why I'm involved. And it's important, something you mentioned is important because I think a lot of people who watch online and things like that, not, not because they're stupid, they just might not understand. A lot of people are like, no, no, she should run as an independent. And I've said, you have to actually focus on the yeah. specific community you're yeah. running on because maybe that could maybe you could be competitive yeah. somewhere else but here I mean the uh, Marsha Fudge was beating the Republican in the general election by 60 points yeah. I mean as far yeah, as I could tell an independent can't compete here no not here so you could do that somewhere else and and if, if she could win that way somewhere else more power to her she understands you know, that's why did Bernie run as a Democrat right in the for, for the presidency it's just the system we have at the moment and that's what we have to use, and we have to elect people that best represent our values, right? Mm -hmm. And that's Nina, Medicare for all. That's the, the Green New Deal. Nobody can, really, nobody speaks as clearly, I think, to a swath of the population uh, than, than Nina does about these issues. I think she can fire people up, and I think that's how you change things. You mentioned the progressive movement. It seems to be a little more fractured now. People aren't voting Democrat. That's because there aren't any Democrats that are catering to their interests, right? Mm -hmm. Their self-interest, which is we need to forgive student debt, just right. flat out. We need a better uh, criminal justice system that's built from the ground up to serve everybody and, and stop incarcerating, right? So it, it really depends on how we vote today, right? Right. And do you think, Nina, because from what I've seen, uh, the squad, um, you know, the most aggressive stance they've taken is like writing kind letters to the president asking him to do things. Uh, I've known Nina for a few years. She doesn't strike me as someone stopping no. at stopping at writing letters. No. Uh, do you think she'll go in there and uh, possibly agitate even I, if it's against the Democratic Party? Yeah, I think that's exactly it. You, you summed it up perfectly. Like here's somebody who if you watch any of the, you know, Chantel Brown ads against Nina, uh, they tout her like ability to effectively, I think, communicate and, and speak truth to power, as she'd say, right? Um, in her critiques of the president. And I think she would be a voice that could not be ignored. Uh, and I think she'd, she'd actually lend a little bit of a, a backbone, another one of her references, uh, to, uh, to others that are really trying, I think, to do the right thing. But having another member that is that strong and that fire, that can bring that much passion, uh, and then again, just effectively communicate to a section of the population, I think has sort of not been effectively communicated the progressive message to yet. I think that's Nina. And, you know, it's interesting because Chantel Brown, like 80% of her ads are about Nina Turner is divisive, she's not a good Democrat, but Chantel Brown right now is going against President Biden on the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah. It definitely doesn't have anything to do with the billions from the Democratic majority for Israel, right. but she's, Biden wants to uh, redo the Iran nuclear deal and Brown is against that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's, it's the wrong direction. <laughs> so it's, uh, 
we want people that will stand up for, again, stand for our values in, in the right direction right. Uh, and, and be able to speak truth to power um, for us, not for some special interest, some oil billionaire, whoever's paying for the ads that are keeping them there. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, broader on Ohio, um, obviously Ohio was a swing state not so long ago, mm -hmm. uh, but it definitely seems to be have le leaning more red uh, in recent years. Uh, you got J.D. Vance and yeah. uh, Senate primaries and uh, congressional primaries with closer to Trump uh, Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, talk about Ohio as a whole. Is Ohio kind of semi-permanently red right now? No, absolutely not. We're, it'll be in play the second we have another sort of catalyzing figure like a Barack Obama, regardless how you feel about his politics or what you know his campaign represented. I volunteered for him in 2008 again in 2012. Um, you know, once we have somebody we can rally behind, somebody that's willing to do the work and organize, um, you know, I think the Republicans have just had a smarter strategy, horrible policies, and horrifically racist sort of uh, attack ads, and they've really whipped up a certain element here. But we, we, the people who were here in 2012 and 2008 are still here. They just need to be, uh, they need to have something to believe in again. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Councilman uh, Tristan Rader of Lakewood, and we'll see. Lakewood could make the difference, so I'm glad we came here. Thanks for the time, man. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and make sure to tune in to Status Quo's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time and Fridays at 4 o'clock Eastern Time.